Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Welcome into the Friday, November 11, 2022 Market Plus. John Roach joining us again. Uh, John, we're recording this early on Thursday, so somebody wanted me to ask you to lay your neck out for Friday. I'm not going to make you do that. But I am going to make you stick your neck out about this stock market. Uh, there's always this discussion. I remember six years ago, the stock market after Donald Trump was elected did some things. There were some adjustments. Is the movement that's happening late week tied at all to the election? Or is it all about this crypto thing? I think it's definitely tied to the election. Um, the, w w let's, let's back up a little bit. What's taken the stock market down? Uh, and it, it's been the increasing interest rates. And the increasing interest rates was to slow down inflation. And the inflation was caused by Congress spending a lot of money. And um, uh, so when, when you have uh, uh, the possibility uh, that uh, Congress won't spend so much money because it's deadlocked, um, then there's a possibility that the Fed doesn't have to do so much work uh, in order to slow down the inflation, that, that you, you, you do it uh, um, uh, fiscally. And um, uh, so that, was, that optimism caught a hold of a market that's down 25% this year or something like that. And if you look at all the different statistics from history, uh, when you get a stock market down 25%, um, it normally doesn't stay there, and it's a buying opportunity. And so people were, were are, I mean, should say are, afraid of missing the buying opportunity. Um, and so this is kind of the second time that we, we inserted some optimism about the Fed being done with their, or going to slow down their, their uh, increasing interest rate. Uh, policy. Uh, the, the attitude a week ago was that uh, the, the Fed would go up 75 basis points in the next month. And now the attitude uh, dropped down to, well, maybe only 50 basis points. Uh, maybe they don't even have to do it. Uh, the the uh, report out today on inflation, uh, it's increasing at a smaller pace than people thought. And so you've got that optimism uh, of maybe the Fed doesn't have to work so hard with the interest rates, which put the optimism right back into the stock market. And, um, uh, and, and so we, we rapid, we gained uh, uh, all the losses we had in the last few days back very quickly. Uh, now the question becomes one of, have, have we slowed the inflation down? And I would, I would argue that the report that came out today shows that the inflation moderated a little. Uh, I don't think that it's uh, moderated enough uh, that the Fed is going to be able to uh, uh, to cease raising their interest rates. Um, the, the Fed interest rates, uh, you know, are you know we're we're, we're seeing uh, uh, we're pumped up to about four, a little over four, four and a half percent on the two-year Treasuries. Um, when you're inflating at seven or eight um, percent, that's not high enough of a rate. Um, I, I lived through the last time we had rampant inflation that the Fed had to choke it off. Uh, and, uh, and you have to get people convinced that there is no more inflation and convinced that they can't afford to borrow any money to do anything. Uh, and we're not anywhere close to that stage. So I think that the, the rally that we're getting here now uh, is in the stock market. Uh, uh, is probably going to be followed by some pressure again, uh, again caused by rising interest rates. Uh, we've we've had the the government do everything they can do. The administration has done everything they can do to hold down inflation until the election. Well, now the election's over. Well, but John, you know, you mentioned in the in this country, but we're seeing inflation globally. Is it really just is it the U.S. having that big of an influence globally, or is it? Are all of these countries, you can't say necessarily that all of these countries are having the same reasoning for their inflation? Well, it, it, uh, the, 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 here's the reasoning, and let's go, let's go to the real basic of the reasoning. We're trying to get off of a carbon economy. And, and the reason that we had the rampant inflation back when I was a kid or, or a young adult uh, back in the uh, in the uh, 70s and going into 80s, the reason that we had that inflation was, if you remember, an Arab, Arab oil embargo. 
Uh, and that was a relatively temporary kind of a situation. What we're doing now is we're going to decarbon the economy. That's not temporary. That's a that's a major change in policy, and and it's not a U.S. thing. It's a world policy change that is being um, uh, attempted, uh, and and we quite frankly we don't have an alternative. Um, you know the vehicle that the vehicles that I see going up and down the road here, and we've got a lot of electric vehicles down here in South Florida, but most of them are still powered by fuel, yeah, uh, and by liquid motor fuel, and uh, so. Uh, be careful here thinking that we can change our economy without inflating everything. Um, uh, and so are we done with the inflation? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Let's get to a couple of the questions submitted. First one is about the wheat market. And this is a guy not too tar- terribly far from me, closer to you than me. Uh, Mike in Slidell, Louisiana wants to know, John, will my $9 wheat calls print for December? Uh, $9 wheat calls? Um mm-hmm. I think the market's going to maybe struggle to uh, uh, to um, uh, move that far that fast, uh, but there's always the possibility. To, it's really a weather dependent situation, um, or, or partially weather, not totally, but partially weather dependent. Yeah, you hit that pretty heavy there in the the show. We don't normally discuss wheat as long as we did. I was kind of glad we were able to get that. And that was the big market mover on the week in the sense of percentages. I mean, the December contract down 5.2%, the March down 4.7%. But the corn contract also down, and that's where our next question comes from. Uh, Jeremy in Port Austin, Michigan wants to know, John, when will this short corn crop show up in the market or has it already been figured in? Well, I think the short corn crop uh, was figured in uh, actually uh, some uh, months ago, really. Um, uh, we were so worried about the corn crop, if, if you recall, back in April. And uh, and so that's when we thought the, the crop was was hurt the worst. Uh, and, and, and the report that the USDA released uh, yesterday, uh, they raised the yield four tenths of a bushel. Um, and in the private reports that we see, uh, uh, we've seen the numbers be increased. And we've also seen from some of the analysts that count the kernels and do all of the statistical stuff uh, based on their analysis, the USDA will likely raise it again next month. So, um, or not next month, but in a, in a final report. And so, uh, no, the, the, the corn crop is likely not to get much smaller uh, than what it is right now. All right. Well, uh, that also figures in to the next question and to the next topic involving corn. What do you do in 23? So Shannon in Iowa wrote us on Facebook, are you recommending a high percentage of new crop 23 corn sales at this time? No, not really. Uh, we did some of that um, back when prices were higher and, and uh, back during what we would call our selling season, uh, which it runs kind of March through July. Um, right now we're in the harvest season. Uh, and so now is when you tend to have lower price levels. Uh, in fact, is uh, on our buy signal in corn, we have actually a buy signal right now in corn. It's a two box buy signal. And one of the boxes is seasonality, which means this is the time of year. Most years, it's a good time of year to be a buyer. So November isn't a good time to be a seller unless you really like the price. If you really like the price, there's never anything wrong with doing with making some sales. But if you were to make any sales, I'd make them very small because uh, my argument would be that we'll worry about that uh, uh, 23 crop a lot between now and harvest next year. You- uh, and, and the thing we talked about on the show that I need to bring up right now is that Argentina uh, has a problem. Uh, it's dry there. Uh, they don't have their, all their corn planted. They're re- running out of their corn planting season. And, uh, and, so, uh, uh, and they're a big exporter in the world. And so we, keep your eye on Argentina. That's the first crop to be threatened, and it is being threatened. And the, the next step after that is, well, how about the Black Sea region? Well, how are their plantings going to be this fall? I think they're going to be down. Um, and so uh, so we have some positive news we think comes uh, into the marketplace um, uh, as we move along a little bit. Plus, our demand has been just terrible. We think it'll pick up. What about in cotton? Uh, are you buying that? Are you selling that right now? Uh, cotton market's actually got a sell signal on it, but it's at a very low price. And so we're not very much, you know, same thing, wrong time of year to sell it. And so we're really not interested in selling any more cotton right now uh, than what you need to cover 30 days cash flow. 
So in other words, if you've got enough money in the bank and you don't have to worry about paying any bills in the next 30 days, I'd give the market some opportunity. I, I, don't, I don't like this price level. Okay. Uh, we may end up having to sell more at this price level, but we'll just do enough in order to cover what our financial needs are near term rather than making a regular market uh, movement. Once again, you know, we're, we're better off, we think, as we move uh, into the selling season, uh, which is uh, well after the first of the year. You covered a lot of this already in the opening part of Plus, but let's close with this real fast. Our last question came, uh, comes from Paul in Minnesota in Drovers, and he wants to know how far, uh, how far are we away from another farm crisis? You know, at, at, um, I lived through the last farm crisis, and, and what I saw as the reason for the crisis was farms that were levered. Uh, people were buying farm ground uh, a little bit like they were buying property in Florida. And, uh, you know, it, it, they, they were borrowing a lot of money. And, uh, and then when the interest rates went higher, then suddenly it didn't work. Uh, the, the, the values came down. The people uh, had a bad loan-to-value ratio. Uh, and the bank said that we can't loan you any more money, and that took people out of business. The people that are buying farms now are paying for them, or they're or they're putting a substantial amount down. And and I don't know that there's many farms right now that people are are selling uh, that are being sold to someone with a lot of um, a risk involved. Uh, and so I think agriculture is on pretty solid footing right now, and uh, we may be getting a little too high on farm. Prices, I wouldn't argue with that, but I'm not sure that 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 there's that they'll come down much. Yeah. Um, uh, when people buy them and pay for them with cash, uh, that doesn't put much pressure on the market when land values sag. Yeah, and that's been a common thing when that question comes up about there's a lot more cash being used than the than the bank. Well, John, good to see you again. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks. Appreciate being on. All right, John Roach, everyone. Next week, we are going to look at the unusual package drones are delivering, and Dan Huber will analyze the markets. I'm Paul Yeager. Thank you for watching, and have a great week.